Welcome to another edition of Manor. I'm your host, Pastor Tony Wade. I'm so glad you're able to join us. I want to pick up on some thoughts that we talked about on last week, you know, about the Holy Spirit being that power plant on the inside. And I really want to speak specifically to those who either hadn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, or those who do speak in tongues, but they hadn't really been using their, the effectiveness of their prayer language. It is so important that you begin to go back and do that. And for those who don't, hadn't experienced this free gift that God has given us, this, the gift of Holy Spirit who also comes to empower us or help us in our prayer language, I want to encourage you to really search the scriptures. And we're going to deal with some things on next week relating to uh, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit so you can, you can be able to come into enjoying that experience. It's a separate experience from salvation, and it's available to every believer, and we're going to get into that on next week. But I want to pick up on a thought as we was talking about how prophecy edifies the church, but speaking in tongues edifies the individual. And so I think so many people have taken out of context what Paul was trying to say to the church. You got to understand in the Corinthian church, they had all of the gifts of the spirit operating, but there was so much chaos and so much disorder that Paul began to address in this letter to the church to bring order back to the house of God. He, he never intended to separate the body of Christ where you got one side that says, well, I believe in speaking in tongues. And then you got the other side that say, I don't believe in that speaking in tongues. That was not his intent. And so, so many people, there have been so much erroneous teaching concerning this that it, it, it has robbed people of the blessing of what being able to pray in your prayer language of tongue could be in your life. And so I want to pick up on some things. I want to go back to verse 2, first of all, that the Bible says that when you speak in an unknown tongue, you're not speaking to man, you're talking to God, how be it in the spirit, you're speaking mysteries. And also that you're edifying yourself. But I want to continue in verse 6 from last week. He said, but now, brother, and if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Notice what he said. What shall I profit you if I come speaking to you? So I, I, I want to deal a little bit with because when you go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and you talk about the gifts of the Spirit, you're talking about word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gifts of healing, working of miracles, the gift of faith, prophecy, uh, diverse kinds of tongue or different kinds of tongue and the interpretation of tongue. That's not the same as the personal prayer language of prayer. And I'll probably get into that subject another day, but I wanted to throw that out there because there's a gift of tongues that is for the church where you get up and you speak in different languages in tongue and then there's an interpretation. But then there's the, your personal prayer language where you're talking directly to God and you're speaking mysteries to him and you don't need an interpretation because you are talking to God. But what has happened, there's been so much deep disorder and chaos that people just speaking in tongues all out, all over the place, over the microphone and not giving interpretation. And a lot of people have had a bad experience with it. Well, what I always say to that, stick to the word. What does the word say? Don't allow experiences to cause you to, to change what you think about something that is from God. Go back to the word of God and search the scriptures in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. So don't allow an experience to say, oh, I don't want anything to do with that because you could be missing out on a great blessing when God himself, Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem till you wait for the promise from the father. So if he said it, that means we need it. And when you look at it, that was the last thing he talked about before he left. And so let me, let me give you this as we go. So Paul said, how can I come to you speaking except I come by revelation, come by knowledge, come by teaching? So speaking in tongues, if in the church, that's a, that's a spiritual gift that should be done if it's done to the public. Now, you can still speak in tongues in church when you're talking to God, but you don't want to be all out of control and, and disrupting those that are around you because you're praying to God. And he understands and you're speaking mysteries to him. But we're talking about the public aspect where you pe get people just get on the microphone. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not a, you know, those things are really out of order. But it's still them speaking in tongue, but it's just not in order. It just need to be taught. So we're not going to throw the baby out 
with the bath water. We want to make sure that we de- do things decently and in order, and we want to remain true to the Word of God, and we want to receive the benefit and the blessing of what it can mean in our lives as we build ourselves up, drawing on that spiritual power plant that's on the inside called Holy Spirit. And so I, 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 it's just so much I, I got to give you that we're going to probably have to cover this some of this next week. But uh, just continue to search, search the scriptures and continue to tune in the manner. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful week. And remember, stay connected to us. God bless you.